Today I want to share with you how to put together a three-day emergency preparedness food kit for your bug out bag using real food. Plus, I also want to share with you how to keep medications cold that require refrigeration when you don't have refrigeration. And as a bonus, I also want to share with you how to prepare to leave your home with your pets and make sure you have their proper supplies on hand. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now, under most circumstances, we always hope we can stay in our home, but with this being National Preparedness Month, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about what we need to have on hand in the event that we did need to leave our house. Now, as we go through these various foods for your bug out bag, don't worry, you don't need to write anything down because I've prepared a download for you that you can print out, no email required, and print out as many as you want and share them with family and friends. And it'll list all of the things I'm gonna cover. And so you can take that to the grocery store with you. You can either put it on your phone or you can print it out and check off things as you acquire what you need. Now there are some wonderful videos out there which I'll be sure to link to that show you how to stock a full range of supplies for your bug out bag. But today I really wanted to concentrate on how to put real food in our bug out bags as opposed to a lot of processed foods. Now there may be all different reasons as to why you might have to leave your house. Here in Central Texas, the type of weather conditions that we may encounter are tornadoes and floods, and it's really floods that often require evacuation. Now what I like to do is prepare a bug out bag that has three days worth of supplies that we'll need, but hopefully after three days there's some normalcy returned to our community so that we can return to our home, or if we're in a shelter there's running water and electricity again. And three days worth of supplies is a reasonable amount to be able to carry. Number one, and probably one of the most important things, make sure that you've got some way to have water. So in terms of thinking of weight and what you think you might be able to carry, you're going to have to think of water, but water is heavy. Generally what I like to do is to make sure that I have three bottles of water in each bug out bag. Now, if you have young children, carrying all three in their bug out bag may be heavy for them along with whatever other supplies you put in their bug out bag. So you may have to bring the smaller bottles for them, but then you can take some of these smaller bottles and put them in your backpack. So maybe they might just have one or two of these little bottles and then you would have four to try to make up three bottles worth of water for them. Now three bottles of water isn't a lot for three days and hopefully if you have to evacuate and you're in some type of shelter they have water available. But if not and you need to make these three bottles of water hydrate you as best as possible, I always recommend having some of these hydration multipliers. And these are often sold in a box or a big bag and you can get these and divvy them up amongst everyone's bug out bag. And then what you do is you just pour this right into your bottle of water and it hydrates you better than just the water by itself. These little bottles of apple cider vinegar are very good for doing this as well. Plus these have probiotics, probiotics in them and that's also good to just kind of keep your health and your resistance and boost your immune system while you're out and about and away from home. Also, I think something that's very good to have and it's very light is some type of water bottle that has some type of filtration system in it. And this is one, this particular one is made by LifeStraw. I really like these and they also sell replacement filters. Plus they just sell the individual LifeStraw if you just want to carry that as opposed to a water bottle. But what's nice is if you are near a water supply and maybe you, there's some question as to the sanitary level of it, you can not only, if you just have the LifeStraw, you would only be able to drink what you could while you were there, but this is nice. You can fill this up and you've got your filter right in place here. 
And this particular bottle is very nice because it comes with a little toggle so you could always hook this to your belt as opposed to having it in your backpack. But if all you have are these bottles of water, just hold on to them because after you finish them, if you're near an area where you can refill them, you've got another three days of water on hand. Before we move on to number two, I want to mention that it's very important to not only create bug out bags that you keep in your house in the event that you need to leave your home on foot, it's also a good idea to have bug out bags that are in your car. Now, yes, can you take the bug out bag that's in your home and put it in your car? Certainly. But the reason to have a bug out bag or two, depending on the size of your family or more, in your car is important in the event that you're away from home, but you need to get home. And people often refer to those as get home bags. So when you're making your bug out bags, also think about making your get home bags. Bags that would have everything that you would need if you had to get home, potentially on foot, or if you were in your car, were delayed for a few days before you could actually get to your home. So think about that when you create both your bug out bag and your get home bag. Number two, additional beverages as well as ways to flavor your water. Having some little juice boxes like this, especially if you're traveling with children, can be very handy. They have the straw built in. You don't need to worry about them breaking if you drop them and they're not too heavy. And not only can it provide some fluid as well as nutrition, it's often a morale booster for children because it's a very familiar thing, the juice box with the little straw. Plus, this is very good to have on hand if for any reason maybe you're walking a long distance and you've not had a chance to eat and you get that feeling of, people often call it like a little bit of a sugar crash where you start to feel a little weak, taking a couple of sips of this and you can feel a lot better. Now these are both kind of fun, maybe a little luxury, but my husband loves iced tea, so I like to have some instant iced tea. Now, can you buy these in larger packages, like a bottle of instant iced tea, and then package them into smaller containers? Definitely. And if you have some sort of food saver device, something like that, you could even sort of make your own little individual packs. But generally what I do is I just keep an eye out for things like this. And I purchase them when my grocery store has them on sale or uh, there's a coupon. But basically what I do is build these bug out bags over time. And that's why September is a great month to do this before we go into the real fall and winter weather. Start looking at your grocery store and see what kind of little small supplies like this that, that they might carry. And then what I do is I watch for when they go on sale or there's a coupon. And things like this are especially nice. They're already prepackaged. It makes it very easy. They often have various flavors. This is flavored, I think, with lime. So there's a lot that you can look for right at your grocery store. But by all means, if you've got iced tea, instant iced tea on hand, and that's something you'd like to bring along with you, and you've got a food saver, just make those tiny little bags. You can make tiny little things like this. You know how the food saver will uh, adjust to whatever size that you're, you wanna make. And then you can have these in your, you know, have ones that you make homemade in your bug out bag. And the same is true of these. I just bought these on sale. This is little packages of instant coffee. I think this is adorable. But again, if you have instant coffee in a jar, I often keep a lot in my prepper pantry or my extended pantry where I have my backup supplies in case I run out of other things, out of fresh, you know, fresh, freshly ground coffee or coffee beans. But you could even make little packages like this with your food saver and keep it very fresh. But having things like this, just like a juice box might be a little bit of a morale booster for a child, having maybe some iced tea or maybe being able to have a little, you might not be able to have hot coffee depending on the situation and where you are, but maybe having the little caffeine boost if you're used to it can really be a morale booster. So maybe things like little packages of coffee and little packages of iced tea may seem like a little bit of on the luxurious side, especially when you're worried about having to leave your home. But packing things like this, just as I said, the juice boxes can be a morale booster for the children. Things like this can really be a, mor a morale booster for us adults. 
And I think when you are traveling with children, and even sometimes if you're just traveling with adults, uh, talking about the future, talking about how things will be hopefully within a few days or in a few weeks, and things that you're looking forward to doing, or places maybe you're thinking of taking your children, and just talking about these little things. They may just be little small plans. Uh, they may not even necessarily come to fruition, but having things to look forward to can give you a morale boost to keep you going under whatever circumstances you may be dealing with. Number three is condiments. And these can come in very handy when we flavor the food that's coming up. Now, whenever I go somewhere where they include these little condiment packages, I always like to save them. But I've also seen them for sale at the big box stores like Sam's Club and Costco, maybe even Walmart will have them. And you can buy a little batch of these and they're very good to keep on hand, especially for your bug out bag. They're very lightweight and they can give a little bit of a flavor of familiarity, whatever foods you may have brought with you to eat. This is a little hot sauce. They got some ketchup here and I've got some mustard. And I also have these little packages of salt and pepper, which are wonderful to keep on hand. And all I do is just keep them all in one of these little tiny plastic snack bags and then into the bug out bag they go. I also like to keep these little packages of stevia in the event that maybe you are able to get a hot cup of coffee. You can enjoy something like this and give it a little sweetness. My grocery store sells these. They look a little different. Uh, this is probably along with some of the condiments that I was given, you know, at, at uh, a, you know, particular restaurant or something. Uh, but my grocery store also sells these. This is also stevia. And so I keep these on hand as well. And then I'll just put everything right into my little plastic bag. Then what I've got over here are little tubes of honey. And these are very nice because I actually found these at my grocery store and they're, and forgive my pronunciation, I hope I say it right, Manuka honey. And Manuka honey is supposed to be very good in, you know, antiviral, antibacterial, you know, all these different uh, good properties uh, that honey uh, is known for having, but especially high in this particular type of honey. And so I thought that these were wonderful for the bug out bag, not only to add a little sweetness uh, to whatever you might be enjoying, but also to give you that little bit of immunity boost that Manuka honey is supposed to give you. And you never know if you have a little sore throat or in terms of boosting your immunity, especially, you know, if you do wind up having to stay at a shelter for a few days and you're with a lot of people and maybe it is during cold and flu season, maybe this will give you a little protection. Number four is protein foods, beef, chicken, fish, and cheese. Now, before we go over this variety of food, I just want to mention that I bought these at different places. So hopefully that'll help most of you. Some of them, yes, I did buy at my local grocery store that may not be in your area, but I also bought some of these at Aldi's and Walmart, which are more nationwide. Now, something you need to keep in mind when you're looking at protein foods that are shelf stable that you can put into a bug out bag, you really want to focus on things that aren't really salty. Now, I do have things like these little beef sticks and you may have things like jerky, but again, you want to always be looking at what is the sodium content because yes, we need some salt, but depending on what our, whatever our situation is, if our water is limited, we don't want to make ourselves too thirsty. So maybe relying on packages of fish like this that are lower in sodium or some of your cheeses that are shelf stable can be very good options. You may even find when you're searching for packaged fishes like salmon or tuna that they will even offer salt-free varieties. Now, speaking of fish, I do have a variety of things here because as I said, I shopped for these things little by little as I was working on stocking my bug out bags. So I basically would just buy whatever was on sale or whatever there was a coupon for. These packages of fish are wonderful for a bug out bag. They're shelf stable, they have a good long shelf life, and they're very lightweight. Yet for how light they are, this is 2.5 ounces, they offer, in this case with the salmon, 15 grams of protein. 
Now, yes, you do need silverware most likely to eat these things, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But first, I just want to focus on the food. When you look in your aisle at your grocery store that sells these shelf-stable type fishes, you're going to see a wide variety. And what I've got here is salmon. I've got chunk white albacore. I think some people prefer this over the uh, darker tuna. But this is wild caught chunk white albacore. I think it's probably very tasty. And again, it's very light, two and a half ounces. And this is packed in spring water, which is nice. And it's wild caught. And I think we got these on sale for 79, I think it was 79 cents. So a lot of this doesn't break the bank, which is nice. And there are also extremely nutritious options. Uh, like this particular one is a wild pink salmon and it's an extra virgin olive oil. And none of these were particularly expensive. And this is good until December 2024. So you can have this in your bug out bag and know that it's got a pretty good shelf life in there. And speaking of shelf life, you do every so many months, maybe even every three to six months, check your bug out bag and take out those foods that may be close to their best buy date or best used by date. Now, as we've talked in the past, Many foods are, are good well beyond their best used by date. But if you want to just stay on top of it in terms of your bug out bag, uh, you, it's wise to look at it periodically, take that food out, eat it, and then replace it with something that may have a further out best used by date. This is a wild yellowfin tuna. I think that's probably very good. And then I've just got some of the chunk light, uh, which I really like. I'm fine with it. And this is two and a half ounces. It's packed in spring water and it's got 18 grams of protein and it's just two and a half ounces. So these are wonderful uh, options to have. Uh, they've got larger packages if you want that. And this is five ounces, it's still five ounces, it's relatively light, but I know every ounce counts when you're pack packing a bug out bag. So definitely look for these. These are wonderful options. They're real food. They're going to give you good protein and with, without a lot of additives and they'll keep you full and functioning while you're away from your home. This was something new that I found. I had never seen this before. And these are called uh, infusions. And it's basically tuna fish in extra virgin olive oil. Uh, and it has herbs and spices. In this particular case, it has basil. And you can, you can look at it. You know, they show it looks very fresh. And what I found so interesting about this is this, this is a very lightweight package. It says on the outside, I believe it says 2.8 ounces. So you can, this is very uh, lightweight, not just a little more than these, but f it just feels so lightweight. And how convenient that it's all kind of comes in its little bowl, its little own bowl that you can eat uh, right from the little bowl. But what I was very impressed with was that this had 21 grams of protein. So that's a lot of protein. And I think that's important. It's not so crucial for those of us uh, who are full grown, who are older. But when you're traveling with children, especially if you're traveling with teenagers and having to leave the house, I think the more protein foods you can have, the better. It'll fill them up and it'll keep them strong and healthy for depending on uh, how, you know, how many days you're going to be gone from your house. And no one wants uh, hungry teenagers on their hand. You want to keep them well fed. And I think things that are high in protein will do the job. Another good option that is also reasonably priced for the amount of protein that you get are the kipper snacks. These are delicious. And if you're used to eating them at home, it can be very comforting to have them when you're away from home. And this is a little heavier. This is three and a half ounces. It is in a can, but it's very shelf stable. It generally has a long uh, best buy date similar to the package tunas. This is also good until December 2024. And so you really can't go wrong. And it's got 15 grams of protein. So if you like kippers, this is a wonderful thing to put in your bug out bag. And what's nice is like this, you know, they can, you know, 
go around in your bag and you don't have to worry about anything breaking or getting crushed. And the same with this, it's in a can and so it stays you know, nice and intact and you don't have to worry about anything breaking or getting crushed. Next, I wanna talk about some options for chicken. I was very impressed with these and hopefully you can find these at your local grocery store. And these are like the Vienna sausage, but they're made from chicken. And what I liked was when I looked at the ingredients, the first ingredient is chicken. That's always a good thing. And then it's basically water and seasoning with a few other things, you know, it's not perfect. But overall, I thought that this was a good option if you enjoy Vienna sausages, uh, but you want ones that are made from chicken. Now this is a little heavier. This weighs five ounces, but this entire can does provide 20 grams of protein. And these little snack on the run kits are very cute. And these are very good for a bug out bag as well. Uh, these are only three and a half ounces, but they contain, uh, in this case, chicken salad. Now this only offers eight grams of protein, but it is a small amount, but it's nice that it has the crackers intact and protected for you. And the same with the tuna fish. This is three and a half ounces, but it's a tuna salad. And that's the nice thing too. These are the salad versions, the chicken salad and the tuna salad. Uh, so, and I mean, they're not perfect. Yeah, I know this isn't homemade mayonnaise and all of that, but an emergency situation, uh, at least it's closer to real food uh, than a lot of junk food that we might otherwise uh, find in a bug out bag. This is three and a half ounces also, and this one actually only has six grams of protein. So the protein in these is on the lighter side, but again, you get it in a box with crackers that are protected from being broken. And something that's nice to have on hand if you like to have cheese are these Laughing Cow wedges. They don't need to be refrigerated and they come in a box that can really help protect the cheese from being smashed. Now this Laughing Cow cheese is made from real milk and there may also be grocery store versions of this. I know I've seen this at my grocery store in their own version. So that's definitely something to look for. And it, as I said, it is made from real milk and it's nice, it's protected in this box. And each wedge has two grams of protein, not high, you know, like the fish and the chicken, uh, but it is rich in calcium and it's kind of comforting and a little tasty if you enjoy cheese, but you need some type of cheese that is not perishable. Now these are some different types of beef snacks that I've purchased. Uh, this one and this one are from my local grocery store. This one I actually found at Aldi's. Now these are definitely high in protein and they are filling, but you do need to be a little careful because these do tend to be higher in sodium. And I think they had not only this variety where there's just the little beef stick in there, they may have had the type that have the beef stick and the cheese with them, I don't remember. But definitely keep your eyes open uh, if you're at Aldi's. And I'm sure Walmart has uh, you know, something very equivalent as well, because these type of things are very popular. But just keep in mind you know, the sodium and if there are any that are low sodium versions or maybe some turkey or chicken versions, sometimes you see those, sometimes they have a little less sodium. That's something good to keep in mind. But this I thought was very clever because it's got some cheese, you know, some per non-perishable cheese and then the non-perishable beef stick with it. And as I said, I found these at my grocery store, but I think they're pretty common. Uh, so that's definitely something that can help round out uh, your selection of protein in your bug out bag. Now, before we move on to number five, I want to take a minute to talk to you about creating a two week emergency food supply in your home. And this is something different than your extended or your prepper pantry. This is, as the name implies, an emergency food supply of different items that you can prepare in the event that you have no running water and or no electricity. Now I have a video and a corresponding download that you can print out or put on your phone, no email required, share with your family and friends 
that goes through a whole list of foods that you should consider having in what we often refer to as like the survival pantry. This is that part of your extended or prepper pantry where you keep foods that are very easy to prepare. As I said, in the event that you don't have any running water, clean running water, and you don't have any electricity. I show you what to buy, and then I've also created a seven day meal plan for you for how to prepare these foods that you've purchased and how to prepare them when you don't have clean water and you don't have electricity. So keep all of this food in a special area and keep the meal plan with it. And hopefully things won't go more than a week when we had our big winter storm uh, here in Central Texas in February of 2021. After about a week, things were getting back to normal. But if for some reason it goes two weeks, that's why I like to have you prepared for two weeks, you can just repeat that meal plan all over again. And in the shopping list, I explain to you how to make sure that you have enough food based on how many people you have in your home. Now, the second thing that I want to mention that's very important, if while I've been talking about a two week emergency food plan, you're saying prepper pantry, extended pantry, emergency food plan, I haven't done any of this, don't worry. First, let me share that a prepper pantry or an extended pantry, as the name says, extended pantry, is basically where you keep non-perishable foods that are in addition to what you keep in your everyday working pantry. And when foods run low in your working pantry, you can then get foods out of your extended pantry and refill your working pantry. And this comes in especially helpful when there's illness or bad weather or job loss, a whole host of reasons. Now, I generally recommend stocking your extended or prepper pantry little by little by adding an extra $5 a week to your grocery shopping. However, I have heard from many of you who are new to this concept that you don't want to do this little by little because you're getting worried with inflation and prices rising and potential fall and winter weather coming that you want to accelerate this process. And I understand completely. So I have a video with a corresponding handout or printable, downloadable, whatever you call it. And again, no email required that shows you how to accelerate this process of creating a prepper pantry or extended pantry, but without busting the budget. I walk you through the whole way to do this, as well as giving you four inventory lists where you inventory what you have right now in your working pantry, what you have in your refrigerator, what you have in your refrigerator, in your freezer, and if you have the little beginnings of a prepper pantry, what you have there. You're gonna do your inventory, and then I'm gonna show you how to put together a list where basically it takes out some of you know luxuries, but it's not forever, it's just temporary, while you accelerate this process and at the same time stay in your budget. So I will link to both of those that I've talked about, both of these downloads, the two-week emergency plan, and the acceleration, acceleration of the prepper pantry plan. And I'll put those, I'll put them in an iCard and I'll put them in the description underneath this video and I'll also put them in the pinned comment because I know many of you have told me that's easier for you to access. So there's a lot of options for you to click on that and get over to those videos as well as those printouts. Now, one more important thing I wanna share with you before we move on to number five is that you wanna make sure you have some way to sanitize things. Now, yes, there are liquids in the bottle and there are sprays and things like that, but I really like these type of sanitizing wipes because you never 100% know what your situation's gonna be. Uh, you know, here in Central Texas, when there's flooding and things, you might be very muddy, you might feel dirty. These you can at least wipe down and get dirt off of you. Or if you have young children who may be very messy eaters, these again can be very handy to clean up the, the, <laughs> the mess. I'm sure many of you moms who have infants find that baby wipes often do a wonderful job cleaning up many other messes than what they're initially intended for. So I highly recommend keeping some of these in your bug out bag. 
And even though these are sealed, I recommend putting these in some sort of Ziploc container or even some type of plastic container uh, that can basically contain them. Uh, because when I have just had these as is, sometimes this has loosened and leaked. And so I learned my lesson, but thank God that wasn't in my bug out bag, but it was in my pocketbook because I always keep these in my pocketbook. And now I've learned my lesson. I always put these in a plastic bag. Also, in addition to any kind of hand sanitizer you have, having some of these travel size packages of Kleenex are wonderful. Uh, and what's nice is these are so light and they, <laughs> and they really take up very little space, but they've got a nice amount of uh, Kleenex in here, which are exceptionally helpful for runny noses. The next thing that I want to mention are having some plastic containers, and these are very light. And these type of containers, there's so many varieties, so many different companies make them, and they come in all shapes and sizes. And these can be very helpful to hold a whole array of things in a bug out bag. But especially, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, especially if you have anything that could get crushed, any type of food that could get crushed, these can come in very handy. And this one, this is a little bigger. And as the parent, you know, if you want to keep more things in your bug out bag that are all consolidated in one place, having containers like this are very handy. I use things like this so much when my son was young, but there's all kinds of things that you can buy today. It's, it's just amazing to me uh, when you just go down the baby food aisle, the selection of things they have today uh, for infants and young children. Uh, but I found these and I thought this was so terrific because it's, for tra it's made for traveling. And you've got four forks and four spoons. And when you open this, I've kept it sealed just to keep it nice and neat and clean. Uh, but I think this is going to be in mama's <laughs> bug out bag. Uh, but children or adults, I mean, everyone can use this. And what's nice is, uh, you know, since it is for traveling, it comes with the little container. And this was very reasonable. Uh, so this can be wonderful. Uh, on the other hand, if you, you know, this is plastic. I know sometimes people uh, don't necessarily like eating with plastic. You know, I say in an emergency situation, whatever we have is better than nothing. Uh, but they also, when I was in the baby section, uh, they also have cutlery. Again, it's made for children, but it is metal. Uh, so depending, you know, sometimes there are situations where mouthfeel, you know, can be uh, problematic uh, and having something that maybe the child is used to uh, can be a very good thing. And if you get something like this, or I'm sure there's a lot of containers sold like this as well, you can put these in like a little travel case or even just a plastic bag to keep them all together. And then if there are children who do prefer, uh, or even adults who do prefer having uh, metal utensils, you've got this handy. And again, this was very reasonable. And this particular uh, selection of utensils, I really liked this because it's, it's, this is very lightweight. It's beautifully self-contained in this little contain, self-contained in a little container. <laughs> but what I liked is it's more adult sized. Uh, so this can be spe especially nice, and I, I don't mean to sound sexist, but for men this might be exceptionally nice, uh, having the larger uh, utensils, uh, but nice for us women too. But in any event, so these are all the things that I think are very important that kind of go along with having food, your hand sanitizer, some Kleenex, some different types of utensils, and some containers that can hold things, maybe all consolidated in the event that uh, you're the mom and you're keeping things, or the dad, and you're keeping things all in your backpack consolidated, and or you have things that uh, might otherwise get crushed if they don't have some type of way uh, to give them some uh, protection. So definitely think about this array of things. And now let's move on to number five. Number five are healthy snack foods. This is an easy one, and there are so much variety today, no matter where you shop, to find 
foods that are nutritious and that give you protein, fats, good fats, and carbohydrates, and yet are tasty and often familiar to maybe what you're used to eating at home. Something that I think is just terrific are these packages of nut butters. And this is peanut butter, and this is just one that's sweetened with honey, and then this is a classic almond butter. And there are other varieties as well. I think some have maple syrup or maple sugar in them, uh, but whatever the case may be, these I think are just so clever uh, because they're easy to store, they have a long shelf life, and they're just made for a bug out bag. And this just happens to be the Justin's brand, but I've seen now this concept is becoming very popular and there's usually a variety of options for self-contained nut butters like this. And it's nice uh, because you're seeing a variety of nut butters. So if peanuts uh, don't agree with you, you have the option for uh, almonds. And I've, I think I've also seen like cashew and macadamia, they're getting kind of fancy. Also, you can never go wrong with dried fruit. And these have six boxes right here. And today there's a wide variety of little boxes uh, that are sold to hold dried fruit. You might see uh, not just dried raisins, which are very common, but uh, today I've often seen at my grocery store things like um, dried cranberries. Sometimes they have, is it dried blueberries maybe, or dried cherries, you know? There's just a wide variety that are sold in these little boxes, which are nice because you can just divvy these up into different bug out bags and you're all set. And what's nice is peanut butter is high in protein and raisins are high in natural carbohydrates, the natural sugars, so they can be a nice little bit of a sweet treat uh, and also give you a little energy boost. Then when it comes to snack bars, I really just like to pick those things that my family likes. And my son really likes these Power Crunch bars and they're often on sale at my grocery store, which is great, and so that's when I'll get them. And one bar has 14 grams of protein, uh, so you can't go wrong with that. And then other things, I often will see these on clearance at my grocery store. And uh, these are just sort of nut bars mixed with a variety of things. This is an almond and coconut bar, but it's very limited ingredients, so I like these. And then these are just uh, my grocery store's version of granola bars. And I, again, I like these, it's somewhat limited ingredients and they don't have high fructose corn syrup, which I kind of try to steer clear of. And they're very tasty. These are the crunchy ones, not the soft, but they have the crunchy and the soft and all of that. And I think there's a wide variety again of granola bars. There's never a shortage of granola bars at the grocery store. And just try to look for those uh, that are have more simple ingredients. I'm not so hung up about them being organic. Just look for things that uh, primarily, you know, have like these, the have the first ingredient is oats. I like that, <laughs> you know. So that's kind of the thing that that you want to look for is ones that have more wholesome ingredients and limited ingredients. Now, also again, talking about you know buying those things that the family likes. Uh, both my son and I uh, like these Lara bars. I'd say probably my husband might lean uh, to the granola bars, uh, but my son and I, and I especially like these Lara bars, and these have very limited ingredients and they're very wholesome. It's often like dried fruit, nuts, things like that. and the selection of flavors that they offer is really nothing short of amazing and they're quite delicious uh, this is and this is not sponsored i just buy these things and i like them uh, this is peanut butter and chocolate chip and so you can't go wrong with that and these i think are the lemon ones yes these are lemon they're very tasty uh, so again you know just a selection of uh, protein bars that are as wholesome as possible. Next, I like to get these little packages that have nuts and some dried fruit in them. Sometimes they have seeds, sometimes pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. My grocery store sells these, and but I think this is, this is not a brand of my grocery store, so you might find this uh, at your grocery store or maybe at Walmart or all these. Uh, it's uh, Orchard Valley Harvest. I had never heard of it before, but I started seeing it show up at my grocery store. 
So I bought two packages because I thought, gee, these are perfect uh, for our bug out bags. And they just come, in, but what's nice is uh, they've got the antioxidant mix. They've got the omega-3 mix. This has walnuts in it. Uh, walnuts are rich in omega-3. And this has like pumpkin seeds. So definitely look for things like this. And what's nice is some of them are unsalted. So again, we can look to focusing on those foods that have less sodium so we don't feel so thirsty. And then this I bought, th these were on sale and I've never tried these before, but they were intriguing. And this is called Nutrition, like nutrition, but nut with the focus on nut. And actually they're just very similar to these uh, packaged nuts, but they were on sale. And this has peanuts, almonds, pistachios, pecans, walnuts, uh, with a touch of sea salt. So these do have salt in them, uh, but I would imagine they're quite tasty. And so since they were on sale in individual packages, I thought that this would be something good to buy. So if you don't see this brand at your grocery store, look for these. And you may even find that they have salt-free versions too. That I don't know, because this was actually kind of new to me, like these other things were as well. Then the other thing that I want to mention is I found these, and maybe your grocery store will have these too, because this is my grocery store brand, but I'm thinking that this is gonna be a relatively common thing. This is granola, and it's in a snack size pack. And all of these, you know, these are very light. And this is only two, it's just a scotch over two ounces. But how clever is this? Because this is really nice, and this has very wholesome ingredients. It's basically oats and nuts and some sweetener, but they do use sugar. Uh, which is better, you know, I'm happier to see that than high fructose corn syrup. Uh, but you can just rip this open, and if you want it, you could just eat it as a snack. But if you wanted to eat this like a cereal, and you had brought some powdered milk with you, I have not found any really small packages, like individual packages of powdered milk. So that is something that I would consider getting some of that powdered milk, because I have talked about that in terms of the larger bags and boxes that I like to keep in my extended or prepper pantry. And I'm thinking like we were talking about the, the different teas and coffees to flavor our waters, that that might be a very good idea to you if you have one of those food saver devices to maybe make little packages of powdered milk. And you could take this Put powdered milk in it. If you have access to water, you could enjoy it like that, like a little cereal. So that might be very tasty. So definitely, I think a wide variety of snack foods, but that are also real foods and that are also, that they bring some nutrition to the table. Some protein, as I said, good fats, you know, you've got the nuts and the seeds and then the carbohydrates for energy and that have limited ingredients and try to limit the amount of sodium that's in them. So overall, I think that this is a good collection or good selection uh, to look for when you're at your grocery store when it comes to snack foods for your, for your bug out bag. Now, before we move on to number six, there's a couple of important things that I wanna share with you. Number one is that our son is an adult. He's grown and he lives on his own, but he will visit us regularly. So I make sure that even though he has his own bug out bag in his apartment, I make sure that I do have a bug out bag for him that we keep here in the event that he was visiting us and anything happened weather wise or otherwise that we may need to all leave together. So definitely think about that. If you have adult children who visit you regularly, make sure that you have something prepared for them as well as yourselves. The other thing I wanna mention is that uh, earlier in the video, I shared that there are a lot of wonderful videos on YouTube about how to prepare a bug out bag, everything that you might need in your bug out bag. And I think a lot of you know Heidi over at Rain Country Homestead, and she's got a couple of wonderful videos uh, where she shares her bug out bags and the contents, as well as her get home bags. So I'll definitely link to those videos so you can check those out. And she covers a lot of important things, you know, the importance of obviously having very basic things like a flashlight, maybe a hand crank flashlight. 
And there are also a lot of other things that you will need to think about, like having maybe a change of shoes, something that's lightweight but comfortable, but something that you might you can definitely walk in. And then also having a change of socks. These things like this are important, and I guess it's kind of things we think about here in Central Texas, uh, with the possibility of flooding. You know, trying to keep your feet dry can be very important. And also, if you think that you may be around a lot of people and you do have young children, uh, everyone dressed in the same color, or maybe you have T-shirts where everybody has the same color and it can be easy to spot one another. Those got, some things like that can come in very handy and maybe a somewhat uncommon color. And so that, that can be a very smart thing to do, to choose an uncommon color, uh, because a lot of families may do similar things. And if everybody's say in red or blue, it can be hard to spot your own children. And speaking of children, there's something that I want to share with you that is exceptionally important. And I actually learned about this years ago when I went to a presentation uh, by, by our local police department on how to stay safe. And this applies to young children. And this is something that I always did whenever uh, we had to leave our home, just even just for traveling uh, with our son when he was a little boy. I always made sure that his name, especially his first name, because that's very common, was not on his backpack. And as I said, that's common. You know, a lot of kids, the backpack that they have to go to school may have their name on it, just their first name. My son's name is Ben, and I, I know he for a fact that he had a backpack that said Benjamin. You know, but when traveling or when having to leave your house in a bug out situation, you want to make sure that the backpack your child may be carrying does not have their name on it. And the police explained to us that what can happen is unfortunately predators see the name on the backpack and they go up to the child as maybe the child is separated from you for a little bit or may just be standing near you and you may be busy doing something and the predator will say something uh, to the child using their name because the name is displayed on their backpack. And I thought, my goodness, that is such excellent advice. So when you're putting these backpacks together, you can certainly have colorful childlike backpacks, but think twice about having their name uh, monogrammed on it or put on it with a piece of tape or anything like that. Just leave it name free. And I, I just thought I wanted to share that with you because I especially know there's a lot of us, you know, uh, who are mothers, uh, you know, in this YouTube world who are doing things and, and preparing uh, different emergency supplies uh, for our families. And I just thought that was such great advice uh, that was given to us uh, by our local police department. Number six is squeezable fruits and vegetables. These have become so common and you see them very frequently sold for children, but now they're even selling them for adults. And these are perfect for bug out bags because they're self-contained and they're very lightweight. This one for adults is four ounces, a little more than four ounces, and this one is just a scotch over three ounces. And these come in all sorts of flavors, Again, the, the actually, and it's funny, I'm telling you, always check your clearance section at your grocery store. I've shared this with you before, but we got a whole box of these and they were on clearance at our local HEB. But these are wonderful. I mean, even for adults, these are tasty. This is apple, banana, and strawberry. And this one is apple, mango, pineapple, and bananas. They have all kinds of wonderful flavors. And these can be, they, they have, fruits and vegetables mixed together. They have some that are just vegetables. They have some that are just fruits. You know, so when you go down the aisle, as these are often sold kind of where the baby food is. Uh, and you know, it kind of goes into foods for toddlers and whatnot and young children. And sometimes I see these in, uh, they'll even be a little bigger for older children uh, in where the kind of snack food, kind of like where the dried fruit and things like that are sold. They'll have packages of these two. So just keep your eyes open. But this was actually, I have to tell you, this was something new to me. These, this is a smoothie in a little 
squeeze bag like this. I think it's a riot. And it's called a superfood smoothie. It's strawberry banana. And it's got, it's called, this was this variety I took because I thought this was very smart, especially uh, when I'm thinking of what to put in the bug out bag in the fall and winter. And this one has an immunity boost. It has elderberry in it, zinc, and vitamins B12, C, and D. So I just thought this was terrific. And these were not expensive. So definitely keep your eyes open for things like this. This I think can be very, uh, something that's very nutritious and very healthy. The ingredients are very limited and there's really nothing in here uh, that at least, you know, from the way I tend to think about things, nothing that I see that's particularly, you know, troublesome. There's not high fructose corn syrup. There's not uh, vegetable oils. There's not artificial coloring, you know, things that are always a little problematic that we don't necessarily want to bring into our traditional foods kitchen. And if in emergency situations, yes, you have to sometimes be very flexible, but if in emergency situations, we can limit those less than nutritious, ingre nutritious ingredients the best that we can, all the better. And now I just want to take a minute to talk about fresh fruit and even vegetables too. Uh, but things that are hearty like, and, and that are also very kid friendly, but adults enjoy these too. You know, these little cuties, the little mandarin oranges and hearty Hard fruits like a, a green apple or other apple varieties uh, that are very sturdy and can hold up well in a bug out bag. These are things obviously you're not going to put into your bug out bag when you store it, but if uh, you're you, you're given a little time before you have to leave. These are kind of some things that you can throw into a plastic bag and put in your bug out bag. And what's nice about these, especially the cuties, then I guess the apple too, and so maybe those like baby cucumbers, things like that, they're very rich in water, you know, they, in, or you know, a liquid in essence, uh, that can help quench your thirst if you're starting to run low on actual bottled water. <laughs> one, of my, one of my bags just tilted over. But uh, definitely think about um, having some things like this just in your fridge under normal circumstances and if time permits and you don't have to like just grab your bag and get out fast fast uh, if time permits throw in some actual fresh fruits and vegetables as well they're not really that heavy even this apple i mean it probably weighs probably weighs less than this and and these are very light so having a good supply of fresh fruits and vegetables in your refrigerator is always a smart thing and then definitely think of which ones you could pull out that are kind of on the hearty side that would hold up in your bug out bag for about three days number seven is sweets and treats now definitely having the healthy snack food which we covered earlier is wonderful and that can provide some kind of sweets and treats enjoyment with also a lot of added nutrition this category is kind of your real uh, true sweets but can be wonderful morale boosters I always like to have some fig newtons because these are my husband's favorite and at least they're made with fruit and sugar not high fructose corn syrup so that's good and this these are nice because these are all individually wrapped now talking uh, about the plastic containers that we showed before these do have the potential to get mushed in a bug out bag so if you have one of those little plastic containers that can be a great place to put little cookies like this that are individually wrapped but that may be so soft or, or, or a harder cookie that would break and crack up. So having those containers can help from having broken cookies or mush cookies. And this isn't necessarily a sweet, but it's kind of a treat because these are crackers. And again, having those containers can be very handy because even though these are individually wrapped, they will have the potential to get all broken up into little pieces. But if you have that little container, you can put in some Fig Newtons, you can put in some crackers. These can be really enjoyed uh, with the various protein sources that you have, the tuna fish uh, or whatever else that uh, you might open and want to enjoy some crackers with. These are wonderful. And these are very common. These are at, uh, from my grocery store, but I've seen these at a lot of grocery stores and at Walmart and places like that. Uh, where the crackers are all individually wrapped. There's usually a whole section 
because uh, it's very geared to children's lunches and being able to put in a little small package of something. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't buy things like that because they're usually more expensive per ounce than if you buy a, a box of something that you then repackage yourself. But again, when it comes to a bug out bag, when it comes to emergencies, having things like this are very handy. And just make sure you have some kind of plastic container so they don't get crushed. And having some cookies is always nice. Uh, the, what's nice about these is these are pretty uh, hearty. These are the kind of those wafer ones that have like a little bit of cream. And again, I, I just try to find something that at least is, is not, not too bad <laughs> uh, for us. But this, the, they could definitely go in a, in a plastic container, but they al almost may hold up quite well if you don't have any kind of container, because they are quite, uh, quite the way they're packed in here, they're packed in quite firm. And so cookies that are, are sold like this may hold up well. But again, the plastic containers always come in very handy. And then the next thing I want to mention are these fruit twists. My son loves these. And so I always like to have some of these on hand. And they're not this particular brand. Uh, yeah, this is from my grocery store. But Again, these are very common and I've seen them, you know, at Walmart and Aldi's as well. And these are, are made without any high fructose corn syrup, which is good. And the first ingredient is fruit. Uh, so as I've shared with you, when it comes to uh, jams, uh, store-bought jams, I always look for those that list fruit first. And the same thing with things like that are fruit roll-ups. I always look and see if they have fruit first, and they definitely do. And then it's, it's apple puree, so more fruit, and then some vitamin C they're using as a preservative. And then they've got apple juice, and then they have strawberry juice. And so there's really nothing much in here, some carrot juice, and that's it. Uh, so this is kind of a healthy, uh, a healthy treat. And I think, and kids love these. Uh, even older kids, I think, love them. Next, although these are sweets, I do see these to a certain extent as almost serving a medicinal purpose. And the reason is these are both peppermint. And if for any reason you feel nauseous or you have indigestion, peppermint can really help solve a lot of problems. So I always like to keep a handful of peppermint candies in a bug out bag and just in my pocketbook whenever I'm away from home. Having some peppermint candies is wonderful. And also having some type of peppermint sugar-free gum can also quickly quell indigestion. So that's something to keep in mind. Plus, if you're in a situation where you're not able to brush your teeth, you may have a toothbrush and a small uh, little tube of toothpaste in your bug out bag, but if you have no uh, ability to brush your teeth, you often will hear dentists uh, recommend at least trying to chew some sugar-free gum uh, after eating that may help dislodge food that is stuck in your teeth. So this can serve uh, a little peppermint candy and some peppermint gum can definitely serve multiple purposes. Well now I want to talk about something that's very important and that's how to travel with your medication especially if you have medication that needs to be kept cold. What do you do in a bug out situation? And keep in mind, this may apply to a lot of people because we're not just talking about insulin, which you hear is commonly needs to be kept cold. I learned that there are over a hundred medications that need to be kept refrigerated. And I know some of you have shared with me that you have expressed concerns about what you would need to do if you had to leave your home with your medication and you didn't know how to keep it cold. Well, I'm gonna show you how to keep it cold. Now I'll link to a previous video that I made where I shared with you important things that we may overlook when stocking our prepper pantry. They kind of go beyond food, but they're very important to stock uh, given whoever has the responsibility for keeping the prepper pantry stocked. It can also be important to have these other items as well, which I cover in that video. But one of those things that I want to share with you if you're in your home, if you can stay in your home, 
I share a cooler that can be powered by solar panels. And that's a wonderful thing to have, not only to just keep general food cold, but it can also keep medication cold that you may need to keep refrigerated. But unfortunately, if you're without power for an extended period of time and you can't count on your refrigerator anymore, these coolers that are solar powered are wonderful to have. And you can just start with one, maybe add two or three to your household, depending on the size of your household, and you'll be able to preserve your frozen and refrigerated foods, as well as keep cold any medicines that are needed to keep cold. Now, we don't have anyone in our family, in our household, that has diabetes, so we don't have to have insulin kept cold. However, think about other medications that you may need to keep cold, especially as you're getting older. And one of them is eye drops. You may be using eye drops maybe for dry eye and they don't have any preservatives in them and you need to keep that cold, otherwise it'll go bad if it's not refrigerated. But it even goes beyond eye drops. There are other injectable medications that need to be kept cold and there are also certain creams that need to be, cold, to be kept cold for people who may have various skin allergies. So there's a whole host of things that need to be cold, kept cold. Some are prescription, some are not prescription, but once opened, they need to be refrigerated. So definitely start thinking about your medications and which ones may need to be kept cold in the event that you have to leave your house. So how do you keep these things cold? Well, that's what I wanna share with you about this device. This basically looks like a little thermos, but it's so clever. And I really love this because I use eye drops for dry eye, but they need to be refrigerated because I don't like the ones that have preservatives in them. I buy the ones that don't have preservatives, but they need to be kept in the refrigerator. So what do I do if I need to leave the house for three days? I don't want them to go rancid and then be putting something rancid in my eye. But this is such a clever device. You basically keep this in your freezer. It's like one of those little, um, you know, those little freezer packs that, that you see, but this is not very heavy. This is very light. And this really, this doesn't feel much heavier to me than maybe an apple. And once this is frozen, you then put this into your little cooler and then you can slide down in there anything you need. You can put in vials of injectable medications, you can put in your eye drops, you can put in a, a, a tube of your cream. Whatever the case may be, you should be able to fit what you need in here at least for three days or even more supply. Now the manufacturer of this particular device, and I'll put a link to this in the description below uh, so that you can learn more about these type of cooler containers and look at the variety of different sizes and whatnot that they have. Uh, but the manufacturer of this particular one, and this is called For All Family, and they guarantee that this will keep this at like a refrigerated cold temperature for 30 hours. Now granted, that's not three days, that's 30 hours. However, check if, if what you're putting in here is sold over the counter but requires refrigeration, check with the manufacturer and ask them how long can the particular item be kept cool or at close to room temperature, but not refrigerated without spoiling. You know, they may say 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, whatever the case may be. And so you know that even though this is only guaranteed to keep it at a refrigerated temperature for 30 hours, it may keep it cool for, well, obviously it's still gonna be somewhat cool in here. So it's going to keep it in here. It's going to keep it cool for longer. Now, if what you're putting in here is prescription medication, check with your pharmacist because they will tell you, or you can even call 
the 1-800 number of the manufacturer of the drug and you can ask them how long can my medication, my prescription medication, stay cold in, this, in a device like this once it's no longer at the refrigerated temperature? And they will be able to tell you because there are medications that even though they are required to be refrigerated, if they are left at a cool temperature or a room temperature temperature, they're still okay to use. And the manufacturer or your pharmacist should be able to let you know what that time frame is. Now, let's put this aside, the, the gel coolant, the contained gel coolant and this cap. Let's put that aside for a minute. And now let's talk about this contraption. If you are able to leave your home in your car, this whole kit <laughs> comes with a USB cable. It plugs into this device. I'm going to show you how you assemble it and uh, over on this side and then this side can plug into the USB port in your car which many cars today have. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to put whatever medication you need to in this tube and then you're going to put this right into your I guess the easier way to do it, you're putting your medicine in there and you're going to turn this upside down and then just lock this in place. Once you lock this in place, you're going to take this little device, there's a little area right here where this plugs into, and then you're going to plug this into your USB uh, connector in your car. And then this is going to basically work as an electric cooler keeping your medication cold. Then, even better, if you are evacuated to some type of shelter where there are electrical plugs, you can take your USB cable connector, put it into this plug, and in it goes, and then you can plug this into electricity, which will then continue to cool this and keep your medication cold. So you've got some options. And most of these type coolers do come with uh, detailed instructions to help you understand everything and often carrying cases that further insulate them and also make them easier to transport. So if you have medication that needs to be kept cold and you've been worrying about how to keep it cold if you have to leave your home, I hope that some of this has helped uh, reassure you that you do have options available. Alrighty, now that we covered medication, and speaking of medication, keep any medication that doesn't need to be refrigerated in a handy, very accessible place in the event that you needed to leave quickly, you could grab that so you would have everything that you need. And of course, you can always take some vitamins with you, but that's kind of a little bit of a lower priority. If there are uh, prescription or even over-the-counter medications that you feel comfortable keeping on hand with you, make sure you can grab those easily. Alrighty, well now that we've covered medications, let's talk about our pets because I don't know about you, but if I have to evacuate, I'm not leaving without my dog. Now how can we best prepare to take care of our pets if we have to leave our home and take them with us? Now I have a dog, so that's kind of where I'm going to focus on, uh, but certainly a lot of these things would be in common with cats. Uh, the only difference is I would imagine with cats, the best way to transport them would be in some type of carrier. And those carriers might even work very well with small dogs. But if you have a large dog, like we do, a hundred pound <laughs> Labrador Retriever dog, you may find what I'm going to share uh, very helpful. Now let's start with food. Whether you have a dog or a cat, dry food, or canned food is heavy. So what do you do? Well, what I like to do is keep some dehydrated dog food on hand. And how I use that dehydrated dog food is as a topper. And you can see, I have it in a little container here and I have toppers on, on top of the, of the container. And what I like to do is just use this, as the name implies, as a topper. I put a little bit on the top of whatever food I'm giving my dog, usually a dry food, and uh, I also have some canned wet food that's like a little stew, things like that. But the bottom line is he does get a little bit of this every day. 
So that helps kind of spread the expense out uh, over time, but also it has him used to this. So if we had to leave and he had to eat this for three days, he would be okay. And what I like about this particular dry food, I'll put a link. It, I, I don't buy this from Amazon or anything like that. And I, I, I've seen dehydrated dog foods, I believe, uh, online at Chewy's and uh, or Chewy.com. And I, I think I've seen them at PetSmart. Uh, uh, this is one that I did buy online and it's just a dehydrated uh, beef and salmon and it's got like vegetables and whatnot in it. And I just, as I said, I keep it in here and it's ready to go and I can easily put this into a little bug out bag for him. But I will, as I said, I'll put some links below to different places uh, where I've seen dehydrated food and I'll also uh, put a link to the one that I buy, uh, but there's a wide variety of them. So uh, really it's just a matter of experimenting to see what agrees with your dog. Uh, but the nice thing, what I like about this particular dehydrated food is it can be served dry. It does not, you do not need any water to reconstitute it. Uh, they can simply eat it the same way. You can certainly add water to it if you want, uh, but they can eat it just as is. Now, speaking of eating the dog food, they are going to need water too, whether you rehydrate this or not. And I really like this little container. Now you can get collapsible water bowls, which I've had those too. I think they're wonderful. Uh, but this I really like because I could fill this if we're in a place where we can get clean water, great. If not, yes, I am going to have to fill it. It's not going to be super light, uh, but it is something it's important uh, that our pets uh, do have access to water. And so I would fill this with water and then the, the bottom comes off, which is very cute and it can make a little water bowl or a little feeding bowl. And as I said, we have a big dog, he's a hundred pounds, but he's drank out of this and eaten out of this without any complaint. Uh, so I think even with a large dog, you could make this work, but it's definitely perfect uh, for smaller dogs. So th this basically would take care of your food and your water. And those are really gonna be the two most important things. But what I would say, is that, and this is kind of unrelated to food, but something that I think is really important uh, and maybe for larger dogs, I, also maybe smaller dogs too, it de really depends on, on their excitability and, and how well you can control them. But I can't say enough about, I've had dogs all my life and I really like always having a harness and uh, our dog Indy, Indiana Jones, uh, is uh, he's been trained from day one walking with a harness on. And I think it's very important because uh, it's easy, uh, at least from in my humble opinion, I find it easier to control a dog, especially a large dog. And I've often had large dogs uh, to control them with a harness. And in an emergency situation, they can't really slip out of a harness the way they can a collar. And even if, to, if you know, I'm not a fan of, you know, you hear people with choke collars and stuff, you know, that'll tighten. Uh, I'm really not a fan of things like that. Uh, but I make sure he does have a collar on that is secure. He wears it all the time, except when he goes to bed at night. And it has all of the important information. It has my full name, my address, my telephone number, as well as his name. And I think that's very important. And then he, uh, that's the collar, that's separate. Nothing gets hooked to that. And then when we take him for his walk, we put him in the harness. And he's very comfortable, very calm, and he's very used to it now. He's a year and a half old, and he's always worn a harness, so it's like, it's not anything that's new to him. And so I think that's very important that the animal is used to it because in an evacuation situation, and you may be around a lot of people and a lot of strangers and whatnot, and dogs may get nervous. You, you don't always exactly know how the dog is gonna respond, but if you have the harness, they'll feel secure, they'll feel with you, and you can control them. I, I, as I said, in my humble opinion, I think it is easier to control them uh, when they have a harness on. And the harness that I like are these, what they call the easy walk. These are front leaders. 
it's almost impossible for them to pull when they're in a front leader. Now, they just take a little training with this. As I said, we started him in this when he was very young, so he's very used to it. And the a front leader harness attaches, as the name implies, in the front as opposed to in the back. So they can't, it's like doesn't work for them when they try to pull. And if you start them on this when they're young, they realize that. And so they don't bother pulling anymore. And so I really, I highly recommend a front leader. And I think in an emergency situation where they may be slightly nervous or confused as to what's going on, or you have to control them around other people, a front leader is going to make the job a lot easier. So I always, he has his one uh, right now that's just hanging up in the, in the back hall. And I always keep an extra two in case anything happens to that. Alrighty, so we got the food, we got the water, and we got the harness. The next couple of things that I want to talk about are uh, these calming bites. If you have a dog, I have these, uh, but Indy's personality doesn't really need this. Uh, he's the kind of dog that sleep through massive fireworks and thunderstorms and he'd be on his back with his paws in the air snoring you know and other dogs I know you know would be very nervous but given that uh you know when we got him he was a puppy and I didn't really know what his demeanor would be and you know with fourth of July you know Independence Day and fireworks and all of that uh I did keep these on hand uh, but I, I think that something like this can be very helpful if you have a jittery dog, if you have a dog that's nervous. And this is just, uh, I give him the probiotics every day of this brand and I've been very happy with it. So I just bought their calming bites, but as I said, I wound up not really needing them. Um, but I got these from uh, Chewy. They may be available on Amazon. As I said, all of these things I'm going to talk about, you know, including, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, uh, regarding the cooling container uh, for medication. Uh, all, all of these, I'll put all these links so that you can learn more about them. Uh, a lot of the dog things I either buy locally at PetSmart or at uh, Chewy.com if I can't find them locally. But I think a lot of this is available on Amazon also. Uh, but these are just called Advanced Calming Bites and, and they're for behavior uh, to calm a dog, um, uh, to help them sleep. It's got melatonin in it. It's got chamomile, you know, it's pretty simple ingredients uh, that would calm us. <laughs> so uh, that's something to think, uh, keep in mind. And they do make this for, you know, as I said, I'm kind of focused on dogs. I've had dogs all my life. And so that's what I'm really used to working with. Uh, but they, uh, they, all of this is made for cats. They, they have like harnesses for cats. I find it fascinating, but I think I would be inclined to put them in a little carrier. Uh, but if you, when you have to take them out, you know, cause they are going to have to, uh, relieve themselves and whatnot, maybe having some sort of cat harness, you know, I don't know, that might help, but they do make these, they do make dehydrated food for cats and they do make dehydrated calming bites for cats. Uh, so all good things to think about. Next, you probably want to think about what does your dog, what kind of gives your dog comfort? Uh, do they, are they a chewer? Do they, are they a snuggler? You know, do they like the little soft, you know, like dolly-like uh, animal like little stuffed animal toys uh, or you know what is it that they like and I would definitely probably bring with me some kind of little cozy toy because I think my dog would really just enjoy kind of carrying he, he likes to sometimes carry those things around um, but I would find one without a squeaker because I wouldn't want if I was in a group setting I wouldn't want to like annoy other people because he loves to just walk around we call him the one-man band he just walks around squeak 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 that could really get old quickly for other people but Indy is a very very active chewer and a very strong chewer, you know, as big dogs often are. And I met a trainer and she had uh, recommended to me something called yak cheese. Now, I don't know if this is actually made from the milk of yaks. It seems kind of crazy. But what I will say is these are very hard and Indy loves them. See. I mean, this is really hard. You can kind of see how he's kind of already chewed this part. 
and this could give him a lot of enjoyment for an extended period of time. So if we had to sit somewhere or wait, uh, and there wasn't the ability, maybe there was just the ability to go out quickly and, uh, and relieve himself, uh, but there wasn't the ability to go for long walks, something like this would really provide him a lot of entertainment. And then the other thing I have is these are like rawhide, but they're not made from rawhide. They're made from just, uh, you know, like vegetables and a combination of other things. Uh, so if you worry about rawhide, you know, in terms of their digestive system, uh, chews like this are really common today. And it, it, they just say rawhide free, things like that, but they feel like rawhide. And to the dog, they seem like rawhide, I think. <laughs> but both of these can provide a lot of chewing enjoyment uh, to keep dogs that need to be busy keep them occupied. Then the other thing you always need to think about, and I brought back the hand wipes because you're really going to need these, is some way, whatever your way is, to dispose of their waste. Uh, to obviously pick it up and then dispose of it. You know, little bags can work. They come in all sizes. I mean, you have a big dog, you're very prepared. <laughs> so that is something that I think <clears throat> is going to be very important that uh, you, you think ahead of, uh, ahead of time, how am I going to take care of this uh, when the dog has to relieve himself? Uh, because that's something that you need to be, as, as dog owners, as cat owners, you know, whatever pets you have, we have to be very sensitive to that. And uh, we need to make sure that we're cleaning up and because we don't want to cause distress or any upsetness to other people. Uh, so definitely have these things and you'll be well prepared. Now, if you want more information on not only how to stock your pantry, but as we talked about stocking it in emergencies, how to prepare uh, to make meals when you have no electricity, no clean running water, a whole host of subjects like that on how to be prepared. Be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist that covers so much of these things with lots of printouts. They're all free, no email required. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.